Holoosh. <laughs> Ibby. And you, Cool Cousins Podcast. We're back. Lockdowns. Lockdowns. More. More, more, more. Yay. More, more lockdowns. More, <laughs> m- more wondering what's going to happen and just getting short notice and everybody biting their nails and, and living through this alternate reality that we used to just like see in movies. Yeah. It seems. We got the news and I haven't been too vocal about this, but now I think it's time because when this whole thing started, uh, you give the benefit of the doubt. You say we trust in our public officials. We want to support the healthcare system. And as they said, flatten the curve. Do you remember that? Yes. That was the marketing message. Flatten the curve, ladies and gentlemen. It is your civic duty as a law-abiding citizen, as a tax-paying contributor to our society, flatten the curve. And I said, you know what? If our hospitals break down, we're done for. <laughs> we have a public health care system. Bro, you think our hospitals are ever going to break I'm down? I'm just bringing you back a year and a half ago. Okay? Bro, last year, I went to a hospital. The early days, I'm talking. All right. Early days. Sure. All right. I'm talking, bro. Let's talk. Seriously. First, huh. The first two weeks when everything was starting to spiral, you're hearing about, bro, you're hearing about Italy. You're hearing about Greece, Lebanon, uh, Iran, China. I mean, you had a little something worrying, right? Concerning. Yeah. We got, bro, we got to flatten the curve. A, we got to, we have a public healthcare system. We can't have the hospitals... Uh, uh, overflow how many respirators the ICUs like all of that was coming into play do you remember that yeah and I know what you were gonna say about the hospitals but I'm trying to bring you back to like the the early days but what happened to me was in the early days it was only two three months in I'm, but I'm talking two three weeks yeah I guess so all right I guess because so. now we're sitting here now we're sitting here you know how long now a year and a bit yeah Right, because it was just, like last just, February, March. We just passed the uh, so year mark. We're in April, yeah, we're like a year and a bit, and we just went through what I think I don't, I can't even keep count anymore. It's our third or fourth lockdown. I think we're on our third or fourth lockdown. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the help. Thanks for shedding some light on that, Ivy. But please tell tell us about your experience so, two three months in. I I had tendonitis which is overuse of your tendon from a constant motion inflammation inflammation exactly so i was like okay this is getting too much i can't use my hand anymore i'm gonna go to the hospital but i'm like hmm it's gonna be busy in there because of and and by the way hospitals were like kryptonite in the early days oh yeah yeah yeah. i was like yo i'm staying away i don't want to burden anybody even if i had a broken leg i'd be like yo yeah drink drink milk (laughs) (laughs) literally yeah that'll help um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go somewhere out of town, which is not too far. It was like a 40 minute drive. And I go to the hospital. There's a lady outside of the hospital in her little booth. And she's like, how can I help you? I'm like, I have severe pain in my arm. Like, it's very bad. She's like, okay. She gets my information. I walk in. There are two people in front of me. In the hospital. In the hospital. Wow. In a pandemic. In a in a in a pandemic, yeah, they, are, they are over, over exaggerating about with the whole inflammation of hospitals being flooded with patients, this and that. It's like you walk in and you just see nothing. How long? How long were you in and out? I would say I averaged three to four hours, bro, when I go to the hospital. And that is before the pandemic. That was before. That the pandemic. was a common time to wait. I think I broke a record, bro. An hour and like 10 minutes, I was out. Just over an hour? Just over an hour. Oh, and you saw a doctor and everything. I saw a doctor. Okay. That's crazy. That's crazy. And so these stories start creeping up more and more about the hospitals. And it's funny because you hear like people that go to the hospital at the front end of the building, they're saying they're empty. But then I have friends that work in the back end of the hospital, like the ICU, and the messaging and the marketing is completely different. They're like... We're overstressed. We're overworked. The the, the all, all this and that, and it's like, well, I don't doubt your work, and I and I and I commend, and I praise frontline workers 
the people that are putting us before themselves, like incredibly noble, don't get me wrong, but they're busy because they, they're they just dealing with what I think now at this point were regular flus or regular illnesses and they were labeling them as COVID and they were thinking that there was an influx because of COVID and there was a whole bunch of trickery and a whole bunch of of, of clowning around that went on with the results and with the reasons, causes of death. Like if somebody died of pneumonia and he had COVID, they tell they would they would report it as he died from COVID. From COVID. And I've heard some rumors that even if they didn't have COVID, they would also label it as died from COVID as well. I don't know how true that is, but it's been going around a lot. So all that to say, we 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 conformed. And we listened to the authorities. I think most people, for the most part, we didn't hear very much protest in the early days, right? But then slowly you start looking at the numbers and you start looking at your story and I'm hearing other stories. And you're like, okay, well, if we're in a pandemic, like a legit pandemic, why are the, why are the lockdowns controlled? Why are they timed? What's with the timing? Literally, it's all about timing. Because the pandemic, pandemic lockdowns happen at the, pand- at the actual virus's schedule, not, <laughs> not at like our schedule. Yeah, it's like okay, guys, it's time to close now. Okay, we can reopen for a little bit. Meanwhile, the virus is like, yo, I don't give a shit what's happening. I'm just gonna do what I gotta do. Bro, close what? What are they closing? They're literally just closing small businesses. The mall is still open. We just started lockdown. The mall is still open. Kids are still in school. So the rationale is that people are going elsewhere to shop and they're spreading it further. The lockdown closes small stores and small businesses, but major retail giants like Walmart, Home Depot, Costco, and malls are allowed to stay open. What's the point? Whoever can't go to the mall or sorry, whoever can't go to a small business will end up going to Walmart or big businesses and do the exact same thing there. What is going to change? I'm so, still I'm still going to go into Walmart, touch whatever I have to like I don't like this, put it back on the shelf. Ooh, I don't like that, put it back on the shelf, grab my stuff, pay and leave. If I were if I were a DJ, if I wanted to throw a party, I would go to Walmart, Costco, or Home Depot because I know that's where hundreds of people are every day, piling on top of each other, licking the the floor. <laughs> like, I saw one kid at Home Depot. He was picking his nose and rubbing it on the on the on the the tiles. Lovely. And the mom was just looking at him, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> no, I mean it is what it's, it is. You go to Costco, it's like a rave. It's like you're, <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm just like bumping shoulders with people. I'm just like, hey, we're all wearing masks, so it's all good. But God forbid I go see my poor barber who's uh, a, a Syrian refugee trying to build a life, trying to, trying, to, trying to get his family taken care of, just wants to cut hair, put in all the safety measures. Tell us what you need. Tell us what you need, government. We're going to do it. What do you need? Plexiglass? Everywhere. Masks? Free. Everywhere. Take it. I'm wearing three. Visor? I'm wearing one. Uh, sanitizer? There's 10 bottles on the table. Social distance? We, we marked the, whole, the, the, the floors. Reduced hours? We got it. It's on the window. Reduced customers? Yeah, I'm only cutting one person at a time. What more? What do you need? Tell me, tell me, tell me. More, more, more. I need to feed my kids. Tell me more. What else? Please. Oh, yeah, no, you're going to have to close now. Bylaw came, they knocked, they're calling like the KGB back in uh, in Soviet Union. They're calling and knocking now, the bylaw. Costco, you know crowd surf like they do at uh, yep. Coachella and in concerts? You can crowd surf. If you bring a raft, you can actually like raft through people. Everything was done at small business expense. They paid for everything. And so you ask, okay, well, these businesses, why, why, why? The 2008 uh, uh, economic meltdown, they were too big to fail. They're untouchable. It's not a free market. It's not allowed to be a free market. You can't. Unsuccessful businesses were allowed through our taxpayers' money to continue. And apparently, these businesses are, are too big to be unhealthy. 
as well. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. Costco, Walmart, Home Depot, Amazon, uh, Uber. All of these companies are, are too big and apparently they're immune to science. Bio, bi- like biology, chemistry. It doesn't, the rules don't apply. But God forbid my barber, uh, bylaw will, 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 will raid like a SWAT team. They'll oh, yeah. raid his business if Hunt. they see him cutting someone's hair. Oh, it's illegal, bro. It's not allowed. Why would they allow that? They're doing everything wrong there. I felt safer. I feel safer in small businesses than I do at Costco. Because they actually do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. When it comes to keeping it safe for everybody around them. It's ridiculous, man. Like, And I don't understand this whole uh, 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 prediction of, oh, come September, we're going to have another wave. But hey... Let's keep the schools open because guess when they start? September. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And that happened last year too. They predicted it. They're not predicting. They're literally telling you what's going to happen. They use the word prediction to give you hope. And it's the experts. It's, it's, it's complete bullshit, man. Like, I don't understand. Like, like if you want to lock it down, lock it down. Everything. Proper. Yeah. Everything locked down. I was just I was just at the mall. I was literally just at the mall, bro. I went shopping. Why because, are all the malls open? Because, because apparently COVID can only uh, attack uh, uh, Bob's um, hardware store and Lisa's hair salon and Ahmed's uh, barber shop. Th- that's only where COVID exists. Why can't why can I try and close at American Eagle in one mall, but I can't try and close at another American Eagle in another mall? Because, because bro, that, that the economy, that's why. Oh, okay. That fuck. That, oh. You solved you 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 made me understand now the economy. You you made me understand now. Yeah. That makes sense. And that then, makes sense. I mean, and then you think about okay, well, okay, I, I understand what's happening, but I know, I know four people that have caught the virus. It's the flu. It's I know four people in my immediate surrounding. Knock on wood, we stay healthy. I we kept a distance just like I would with the regular flu. And they only described severe flu-like symptoms. I'm on the same boat as you. I know three people who caught it. We know people that caught it. It's not like it's this imaginary thing. And That's by, my point. By the way, they caught it from literally either sharing a drink with somebody or like it has to be something. Like you basically have to lick the person to get it. Ha, yeah, basic, <laughs> ba- basically. Just, you know. Basically. And, and, and for me, it's like, it's not that it's, a, it's not real. No, it is real, but it is a strain. It is a version. It is a a mutation of something that we're already that we already know of. Yeah, the immune compromised and the elderly are already at risk, and they're dying of other things even more so. Forget the survival rate, okay? Forget that. It's like ninety nine point nine eight whatever. Forget that. It's the, 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 our society's most vulnerable need to be protected. I'm all about that. And all the statistics, at least in our city, all the deaths that are related to this strain are coming from areas that have elderly and immune compromised people. And it's not as uh, contagious as the state is. Even if it is. Bro. Even if it is. A friend of mine caught it. Okay. Let me just, let me say this. A friend of mine caught it. From his father. He has COVID. Now he has to isolate. Now his wife has to go get tested. And by the way, they didn't realize that he had COVID until at least a day and a half later. Or a day later. Let's just say a day. All right? So they both went to the same bed. And they woke up. Did their breakfast, everything together. All right? Then they find out he has COVID. She, his wife, goes, gets tested. Negative. Love that. We're like, okay, maybe it's a false negative. Go as gets texted again, negative again. It's 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 literally not as contagious as they're saying it is. And that is just one example. I have other examples that I could share. That's just one example. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's obviously I mean, I'm not that that's a great example. And I don't know from a scientific perspective, like how there's so many variables there. The health of of the of of, of the mom, or maybe she's immune. There's some people that have like immunity to it. I don't know. You're right. Maybe it's not. But here, here's what I do know is that the social damage, the, the, the health damage that I've seen both with myself and the people around me 
has been more damaging than the virus itself. Guaranteed. Divorce rates, domestic violence, alcoholism, drug abuse, obesity have all skyrocketed. The fabric of society is actually under attack right now. And I'll be damned. And the thing is, is that we don't have to think in extremities. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. And I'm not saying that we need to think that this is a hoax and that it's fake. We just need to be rational and protect the people that are at risk with this virus. And why do we have to make every business suffer, make every family suffer? Why is my gym closed? Why does my gym have to close? It is my sanctuary. It is where I go to feel at one with the weights and my my personal records and I listen to my music and it's meditative. Why is my gym closed? How many cases have been reported in, in our city of coming from gyms? Zero. I can eat off the floor in my gym. Do you know how sanitized that place is? It smells cleaner than, it, than, than the hospital or the dentist. Too clean. I need germs. We need, to, we, need, we need germs, bro. We need bacteria. What, and that's another thing. Like, what about herd immunity? Aren't we supposed to evolve through this? Why are we freezing uh, no. evolution because of this pandemic? <laughs> As though we never... The common cold used to kill people and now it doesn't. Do you know why? <laughs> because we received herd, herd immunity. And the power of vaccination. But even those are causing problems. And I don't want to get into to, to that side of things just yet. We'll have another episode about, about that. About the vaccine? About the vaccine. Oh, I, was about to, I was about to go I was about to go to town on the go, vaccine. Go, go ahead. Don't the thing is, like, you, it's not making sense to me. Don't let me stop. How you. so fast they came up with a vaccine of one of the deadliest viruses, if not the deadliest viruses of mankind. Well then, okay, so for me to argue with you, it would be, well, they came up with it so fast because it's one of the deadliest viruses known to mankind. Bro. How come they don't have a cure for cancer or AIDS if, 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 if we're going to go down that road? Because they're also as deadly. I don't uh, know. I oh. think there's a treatment for HIV. I'm not sure. But for cancer, uh, you're right. I don't know if it's the same disease. It's, if it's comparable. I don't know. Bro, if it's been around for so long. Uh, you're right. If I we're mean, able, the pace is crazy. If, if we're able to land a moon, that's uh, a moon. <laughs> If we're able to land a moon on the man, if we're able to land a craft on Mars, bro, if we're able to land a craft on Mars, we're not able to cure cancer, but we can uh, have a vaccine for COVID. Like, like, just, just think of no, I mean, how insane that sounds, bro. Well, I think we're, we're, we're literally the guinea pigs for this vaccine. The testing. Yeah. They're like, I'm, pr- I think I read somewhere pregnant women can't take the vaccine. They can. Can? Or they can't. I heard they can't. No, they so so the so the I think the official messaging was um they're not entirely sure, but they they haven't found a reason why they shouldn't. Or why they couldn't. Which is incredibly reassuring for a pregnant mother. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Let's all go woman. take the vaccine now. Bro, like I don't know, man. This this it's it's just it's too fishy. It's too fishy. It's too fast. It's I too just, soon. It's well, here's what I do know. Okay, and, and you know it's funny. A year ago, I was on. Uh, I was doing a, a live Instagram live with somebody, and they were talking about it and everything. And what I told them was, um, I believe in the people working tirelessly behind the scenes trying to make this right. I believe that there is something real, but I also believe that it's going to get leveraged politically, economically, and that it's going to be used. For certain agendas that's all that's all i knew at the time fast forward now i've given i think through this podcast i think through, through everything we've talked about i've given enough examples as to why i think the time for people to start speaking up is now and it's incredibly refreshing because the people that were speaking up six months ago were considered clowns they were considered yahoos yep quote unquote from from our premier yeah so you know, no mention of vitamin D. There's no mention of fitness. There's no mention of good habits. There's no mention of mental health. No mention of counseling, marriage counseling, parental counseling, alcoholism, drug abuse. That's not what they're talking about. No, no, no. But Johnson and Johnson and Fiverr have a vaccine. Pump a, a, a 50 cc's of that into you. And that's another- don't worry about that. Keep beating the shit out of your wife or your husband. Keep abusing alcohol. And, uh, and don't worry about the, the divorce rates. 
Why is there two different kinds of vaccines? There's like three or four. Which one do you trust? None. They're all different too. I don't trust any of them. Like how, how, how do you know which one is safe and which one is not? I guarantee you none of them are safe. Because once again, it's way too fast. Yeah, you might not you might not get uh, 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 what do you call it? I'm gonna call them symptoms. You might not get mm -hmm. something that'll affect you from the vaccine right away. But you don't know how long it's gonna take for you to kick in. Could be two years, three years, ten years. You you don't know what the side effects are. They don't know what the side effects are yet. What I do know is that our small businesses are suffering. Yeah, Canada's handling Keep it very poorly. Well, even Ontario is handling it because our mayor sent a letter to our premier, which is kind of like a governor in the States. Premier is like a governor, uh, state state governor. And uh, he said, we're absolutely destroying the fabric of, of our society. Our rates are low. Our businesses are taking every precaution possible. The precautions are even annoying. Like, I want to go out and chill and eat and see people. I'm sick of looking at masks. You know, I'm sick of it. But we're doing it because we just want to get over this whole thing. A lot of people are in that mind, uh, uh, frame of mind. But now you have people protest. Montreal. Yeah. Toronto. Toronto's huge, bro. The the, the day after the this little lockdown or break, whatever words they want to use, uh, people are hitting the streets. And now it's like, now I'm thinking like power to them. And who has succeeded through this whole thing? Amazon, Costco, Walmart, Home Depot. Lisa's Nails had to close. Ahmed's Barbershop had to close. Bob's uh, Hardware Store had to close. Bro, the fish market. Is it the fish market? That was in the Byward Market? Yeah. That has been there for how long? Yeah, it was like an, it was like a, a, a local treasure. It was Bro, like a, it, was it was a heritage site. It was unbelievable. Almost. And that shut down. All of the money that we're putting into these businesses, it leaves our city. Right? When you support local business, you're actually supporting the development of where you live. When you support companies that have nothing to do with your town, your city, then you're actually contributing to the breakdown of like the infrastructure. I implore you guys, please, if you guys want to eat, go get the food physically and pick it up. Get curbside pickup. Call the business directly because Uber has nothing to do, to do with the town you're living in. Absolutely nothing. All the money gets siphoned out of your town, your hardworking dollars, and they charge 30% over onto the business. And the business is almost held hostage because they feel like they have to sign up to all of these. And not just Uber. I mean, like all of them. If you want to do delivery, call the actual business that would do delivery. If not, go pick it up yourself. Exactly. That's one of the ways that we can help. And another thing, too, that I'm seeing a lot on Instagram is mind your business. Mind your business. If you see a nail salon open, you see a barber shop open, you see a, 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 a women's uh, hair salon, mind your damn business. Keep walking. Karen, all right? If you have your panties in a bunch, don't walk in and start being a hero. I hate that. People man. need to eat. I, I, I can't stand that. People need to eat, bro. People need to eat. The plexiglass, the sanitizer, the masks. What do you need? What, tell us what, what more. My wife needs to get her hair done. I need a haircut. These are psychological. These are mental things that people like. Hygiene, self-care, the gym, open it. And people are getting fed up. People are like, getting fed like, up. Like, we're complying and we're still locking down. Okay, the, well then what's the point of complying? Those people who hated the anti-maskers are now slowly starting to join them. And you know what's crazy? It's like people want to work. This isn't a lazy society. Absolutely not. Like I, People I, are dying to work. Small businesses are having a hard time to apply for the government benefit thing there. And they're basically getting nothing while they're sitting at home and their business is closed. Yeah, they're, 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 there's no incentive for them economically. They're not getting the help they need. Like they are suffering the most. Yeah. Meanwhile, though, all the big companies we mentioned are like in the 0% tax bracket and no money's coming back into the city. Ridiculous, man. So here's here's actually what I found in the on Instagram. If y'all see salons, nail shops, etc. open during the shutdown, mind your business. 
There's no reason a Home Depot cashier can see 300 customers in a workday, but a hairstylist can't see eight of their trusted clients in a workday. Small businesses are suffering while huge corporations are thriving. And the reason why I'm sticking with nail salons and, and hair salons and barbers is because those are the places that people go to feel good. This is not no longer an immune system conversation. This is now a mental health conversation. Gyms. These are the places we go to feel at peace. That feeling after a fresh cut, you get your beard lined up, you get your hair shaved. Like, what more can you ask for? Bro, best feeling in the world. You walk out, you're you're feeling like a, like a million bucks. Oh, you're ready bro. to take on the world. Hell, hell yeah. Now you want to ask us to stay and, and not move and, and not do anything. And do my own beard and mess it up. You and got all these men walking about around it. with shaved heads. You know, all these men, because they got to shave their head. Every All these men now in the city, it's all shaved heads everywhere. <laughs> looking more like me now, aren't they? It's just everybody looking like Ibby. We need to start somewhere. The conversation, and I feel like that's where a lot of people go to feel good, and not a lot of people feel good right now. And the irony is that we're trying to make people help more healthy, but we have been absolutely destroying people's well-being, mentally and physically. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, holler at us on Instagram or comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. If this even goes up on YouTube, I might get flagged. Let it get <laughs> flagged. Get, It'll get go blocked. back up over and over again. Yeah, so let us know, uh, holler at us on YouTube, and we'd love to hear your thoughts and just in general. I know the rest of the world is going through quite a bit, and I love hearing uh, from you guys from around the world. I know a lot of countries are dealing with this differently, but here we are. This was our story, and slowly I feel like standing with you know the anti-maskers yeah. in, in a way, and I, and I feel like that momentum is starting to build just in terms of popular opinion and what I'm noticing on, on social media. Yeah. I'm getting there too, man. I'm getting there too. It's the just it's 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 not really the I, I, I don't support them for not wanting to wear a mask, but the whole general idea of I'm fed up with this bullshit. So the mask has become the icon in which they need to be against in order to protest the entire situation. I have no biz I have no problem wearing a mask if it'll make other people feel more comfortable. Legally I may not need to, but if we want to have a conversation about what's right and what's wrong the mask is like the center focal point of the whole struggle mm -hmm. right now it's the cool cousins you can talk to us more you can talk to your parents